Hi. So in this presentation, we're going to be trying to address the question that was posed in the previous presentation, and that is, do men swear more than women? And on the surface, that seems like a fairly straightforward, easy question to answer, but it's actually more complicated than it, than it appears on the surface. Um, one of the questions we have to ask is, what do we do mean by men, and what do we mean by women? Um, do we mean all men and all women? So there we're talking about 3,500,000,000 men and 3.5 billion women in the world, 6,000 languages. This becomes a much more complicated process then, because then we need to think about the different languages, what it means to swear in the different languages, how do we determine if some, if, you know, what, swearing, what counts as swearing in each language. Um, it's more complicated. Now, we're going to be focusing on English, which we also have to recognize as a world language. So there's more than one variety of English out there. Are we talking about British English? Are we talking about Irish English, Australian English, um, American English, Canadian English, uh, Indian English? That too becomes a, a, an issue. Now, we're not going to resolve those issues. We are going to concentrate on English, and we are going to assume that we know what we mean by men and women. We're going to define this really in terms of sex, not gender. So sex is biologically determined. Um, you, know, the, you have the, the attributes of the male of the species versus the women of the species, or the females of the species, I should say. Um, now that, of course, as it turns out, it's not as simple as most people assume that there are uh, you know, people that are called intersex. We're not going to worry about that so much. Um, we're going to assume that we can make this nice, easy division. And we're not going to be really basing it on gender per se. Gender has to do with cultural definitions of what is a, a man and what is a woman. And that's going to bring us into some, some areas that are a little dicier than we really want to deal with about uh, gender orientation and so on. So we're just going to assume that we can define what counts as a male, what counts as a female, and move on from there. So the question is, do men do it more than women? And of course, we're talking about swearing. So there are three main ways that this question gets answered, or, or whether, you know, let's actually phrase it as a hypothesis. We're going to hypothesize that men swear more than women. So, if we make that a hypothesis, then of course we need to test it. There are three main pro approaches to testing it. One would be observation, where researchers observe spontaneous speech in order to quantify how much each sex swears. So you would then have some way of observing, maybe you're recording spontaneous speech, maybe you're taking notes as you, as you observe it. However it is, you've got you know, people carrying on conversations, you're observing them, and you are keeping track of how much um, the, the people involved are swearing, and they're tagged according to male or female. Self-report is another uh, approach. Um, researchers ask participants to report how much they swear. Now, self-report is useful in that it's much quicker and easier to gather data like that than observation. Observation is challenging because it takes so much time and there are ethical issues involved where we have to determine whether we're licensed to observe people. So there are certain places where we have expectations of privacy and the observers, the researchers, have to be careful about that, that they're following the ethical guidelines. And in fact, every university that does human subject research is going to have a, a committee, a, a board that determines whether or not the research that's being proposed is ethical and can go forward. That's important because there, there have been some really unethical research studies that, that have been done um, historically. And so in about the 1970s, they started establishing these um, internal review boards to make sure that human subject research was done ethically. 
And then there's a corpus-based approach. The corpus-based approach is that we research um, this through a large database of speech. Typically, it's written. Um, corpora have to be large. There have to be a lot, of, a lot of substance of it. And so we tend to find that it's easier to collect written documents. Like, for example, you could collect um, you know, 20 years of the New York Times. It wouldn't be that hard to do since it's digitalized, and that would then be a corpus. And typically, things get tagged like who wrote it and their biographical information. Um, and that, again, wouldn't be so hard to do using the New York Times or anything like that. So that would be a potential corpus. And there have been quite a few corpora that have been created over time for linguists to use. Um, most of them, like I say, is, are written, although for our purposes, especially when we're talking about swearing, speech would be more useful. People are much more likely to swear when they're speaking than when they are writing. But all of this would be then used to quantify how much each sex swears. And all three of these, sorry, all three of these approaches have been done historically. Um, observation is the most challenging according to time and ethics. Self-report is probably the easiest approach, except for it's not always so reliable. You can't always trust people's intuitions. Um, you know that. You know, honestly, I wouldn't know how often I use the word "fuck." So if somebody asked me that, I don't think I could tell you with any sort of reason. And, and this is something I've thought a lot about. Whereas I think most people probably haven't thought about, you know, do I use it daily? Do I use it several times a day? Do I use it weekly? How often do I use the word? Um, I think this would be a very hard question to answer with any sort of accuracy. So self-report data can be interesting, but it's not always reliable. And so it's not always the best choice when you want to get good, clean data. Corpus data is, is really nice because it's searchable and you can get a lot of data all at once. But again, there's some problems with it, and that is you know, that the, the source can be difficult. Most of it's written, most of it is public rather than private speech or private writing. So all of them are going to have their problems and their issues. But together, hopefully we can get some headway towards answering the, or solving our problem. Research has been, based studies have been conducted. Um, so the results have shown that many researchers have reported that men swear more than women. So there is quite a bit of research out there that, that has pointed in that direction. However, we have to be careful in interpreting the studies. Um, Timothy Jay has pointed out that the studies tend to be biased towards educated middle class white speakers and the studies may be biased towards public speech over private speech. So those can be problematic. Um, there's a good reason why educated middle class white speakers get favored over other speakers, and that is because most research is conducted by academics. Academics you know, are there on campuses, and so the easiest pool of subjects to study are college students. And Unfortunately, college students tend to be a fairly homogenous group, right? They don't, they're not reflective of society as a whole. So minorities are underrepresented. Um, poor people are underrepresented. And by definition, college students are more educated than the majority of the population. So just by virtue of having attended one semester of college, you are more educated than the majority of the population. The other thing is that, that McEnery and Shao have pointed out, so the results may depend on what we consider to be swearing. And that's a problem, is that if we're focusing on just certain words, which is what a lot of these studies have done, they focused on words like fuck and shit or obscenity in general. And if we do that, then we may actually get some skewed report, reports. Because what McHenry and Shao found was that 
when we start broadening our scope of what we consider to be swearing, we actually find that men and women aren't as different as they appeared at first. If we focused on a word like fuck, it would seem that men actually are swearing quite a bit more than women. But if we include words like damn and hell, then we may find that women swear more. So, some researchers have reported that men do not swear more than women. That would be um, McEnery and Shaw, 2004, and Stapleton, 2003. They both found, both of those studies, found that men and women swear about the same amount, but men use terms that are more taboo than the women do, and the women use terms that are less taboo. So, like I was saying, the men are more likely to use ones that are at the higher end, like fuck, like cunt, and women are more likely to use ones at the lower end, like damn, or hell, or God. Um, some research has shown that men may swear more when they are with only men, and less when they are around women, while women swear less when they are around, men, around only women, and more when they are around men. So it seems that when either group is around men, they tend to swear more, Men tend to tone it down when they're around women. Women tend to tone it up when they're around men. Um, now that too has ended up being a little bit problematic in terms of doing observational studies because of what we call the observer's paradox, that the observer may actually you know, affect the results. So the observer may actually you know, become part of the experiment in a sense. And so, for example, if you've got a man observing the um, speakers, that may actually skew the results. And if you have a woman observing the speakers, that may skew the results. So these are all issues that, that need to be considered, and more research needs to be done on this. Another fact that, that a number of people have pointed to is that Whatever the truth is about whether men swear more than women, there does seem to be a trend right now in the United States that men and women's swearing habits are probably converging, that they're not as different as they once were, and that you know, as time goes on, we may find that there's really no differences after a while. All right, that's going to pretty much do it for this presentation. Um, there's a lot more that I address in the book, but for the sake of time, I, I think this is a pretty good start.